economic development team. So the client so says, I'm the economic development manager and Emma is the employability team leader who manages the work he's renting. So in essence, we are uh, split into three uh, separate teams, but obviously sort of complementary and we work very, very closely with each other. So obviously for today, the main purpose is the employability framework and for people uh, is the work case rent team who deliver the council's employability services. And the big focus, obviously, as you'll, you know, no great surprise, is really getting the residents of East Renfrewshire, age 16 plus, into work as well as vocational training to help reduce unemployment and in work poverty within East Renfrewshire. The second team is the place team. They primarily look after our town centres and in place in neighbourhoods. Uh, looking to improve the accessibility, attraction of the town centres, but also within those surrounding communities and neighbourhoods within East Renfrewshire as well. Uh, and again, that's really looking to you know improve access, uh, viability within the town centres and neighbourhoods as well. And we sort of primarily access capital funding for that, whether that be through the Place Based Investment Programme or the Scottish Government Regeneration Grant Programme as well. So that's primarily focused on capital improvements within town centres and neighbourhoods. And then we have our uh, business growth team, and that's split into two distinct areas. Uh, within the council, we provide a whole range of finance to local businesses in the shape of grants, but also loans as well. And then really to either focus on new starts or, or indeed with growth businesses as well. And then linked to that is we have our business gateway East Renfrewshire team as well, who provide a wide range of services both to new starts and growth businesses. And that can be from as basic as HR advice, business planning, financial, digital boost, et cetera, as well. And everything that we do, we are aiming to do through a community wealth building approach within East Renfrewshire. And that really sort of uh, complements the work that's taking place, both at a regional level within the Glasgow City region, but also a national level as well via the uh, Scottish Government. So in terms of obviously our team's role, uh, really sort of defined as uh, enablers of economic growth, uh, but also primarily focused on job creation and making sure that our residents are best positioned to then take advantage of those upcoming employment opportunities, both within East Renfrewshire, but also within the Glasgow City region as well. So a quick overview of the uh, Council's employability team. We are known as Work East Ren, and that's the website uh, on the header of the page, and you can find more information and types of work the team do. So we are the lead for employability services within East Renfrewshire and within the council as well. We uh, provide a wide range of services to help uh, our local residents who are 16 plus or age 16 plus into employment, better employment, but also vocational training as well, with the end result aiming to get our uh, clients into sustainable employment. So in terms of the sort of the uh, sort of cohorts we work with, we are wide ranging uh, in terms of particularly those who are unemployed, long term unemployed, uh, might be underemployed and work poverty as well. So a quite a wide range of uh, priority cohorts, uh, despite being within a small area uh, within East Renfrewshire. We do a wide range of training that would be one to one with client advisors or indeed in group uh, as well, and that's primarily via vocational training courses which we delivered over the last number of years, primarily via the European Social Fund programme. Some of those programmes included getting into security, getting into construction, there's also bound retail and care as well. So primarily looking at what are the growth sectors, both within East Renfrewshire, but also within the city region. And it's really for us as a team to then provide the relevant training and upskilling for interested parties to then take advantage of these upcoming opportunities uh, within the area. Now, key to the work that we do is partnership working. Uh, that's both internal and external. Uh, and you know, I think we we'll probably sort of really emphasise that point is we are very, very keen on partnership, both in terms of employability provision, but also in terms of signposting to other relevant uh, support services as well, such as housing, money advice, addictions, alcohol, etc. as well. We also provide a lot of support to our local businesses within East Renfrewshire. And that can take the form of advertising their vacancies, uh, doing recruitment for them or assisting with recruitment. We do pre COVID, we certainly did uh, have two to three job fairs per annum as well. Uh, and that's something we're looking to obviously uh, 
undertake as soon as you know things allow us to do so. And then there's also that aftercare provision as well in terms of making sure that our clients who are now in employment stay in employment as well. And we are also a modern apprentice provider uh, with skills development in Scotland, primarily around uh, childcare uh, as well as facilities management, etc. And that's primarily sort of looked at uh, internal uh, provision, but also supporting external businesses as well. So in a bit more detail in terms of the services that we provide, obviously comes no great surprise in terms of what we do as an employability team. So it's primarily one to one support with our clients to make sure that we're job ready, they're confident, and then they are actually ready uh, to actually enter the world of work, but also stay in the world of work uh, as well. So again, mentioned before, whether or not clients are unemployed, just out of school, or indeed looking for a new challenge, we are there to help them on their journey into a better or sustainable employment as well. And again, mentioned before, we do, we do deliver a whole range of vocational uh, training programmes as well. And again, each of our uh, clients who are then registered with it, uh, within the team are assigned a dedicated work trained client advisor. And again, they, they provide uh, support services across the strategic skills pipeline, so you just to five. That could be dealing with uh, helping them prepare CVs, getting them prepared for interviews, vocational training, etc. as well. And again, you know, we, we do also provide in work support for those uh, clients, making sure that they, you know, are satisfied and happy and actually stay within their job as well. Now, in terms of support to businesses, that's quite wide ranging. Uh, we do provide a wide range of employer recruitment incentives uh, to local businesses. So, in terms of that, it's primarily focused on the uh, the the person. So, the person would need to be from East Renfrewshire. The business would then, you know, fall within uh, eight of the Glasgow City region areas as well. So, a big focus on getting our East Ren or unemployed East Ren residents into employment, and the employer recruitment centres are a good way of actually doing that as well. Uh, we do provide and promote uh, via our jobs board on the website. A, a range of local, regional, and national vacancies as well, and we do employer engagement and job matching, uh, making sure that you know we provide any uh, work placements, volunteer placements as well, uh, and then matching job ready clients into jobs within uh, East Renfrewshire or indeed, as I said before, the Glasgow City region. We also assist in the recruitment of staff. One of probably our success stories is the ASDA model within Barhead, where in effect, our work East Rain guys uh, form part of the ASDA HR recruitment process, and we work very, very closely with them to try and maximise as many East residents, uh, East Rain residents, getting a job within the ASDA in Barhead. And we will be doing something similar down the Glasgow Road site. Uh, Business Gateway. Yeah. How we deliver management services more business. We have a in terms of uh, promoting vacancies, but also looking at how we can you know help businesses grow and also new start businesses as well. We have a dedicated job brokerage team, you know, championing the cause of our local uh, clients and helping them access jobs as well. We also have the Family Forum program, which is really focused on our care experience young people, and that has actually, over the last number of years, won several national awards in terms of the services that we provide, both in terms of pre employability, but also employability as well. We have a, a lot dedicated to those suffering from health barriers. Uh, maybe preventing them from employment, so obviously I dedicated support around that as well, as well as vocational tra uh, training, including some pre-employability uh, training. We have, you know, really sort of tried to deliver uh, in terms of what are the what are the uh, growth sectors within East Renfrewshire, but also the Glasgow City region as well. And again, mentioned before, we provide youth employability services. And that includes the modern apprenticeship program, which is really, really successful and well. In terms of you know uh, people entering the program, but also a fairly high success rate in those uh, MAs accessing full-time employment 
uh, as their MA programme uh, finishes. We also work very closely with the Syrian uh, community uh, in terms of upskilling vocational training. And I also suspect that we will now be engaging with the a cohort of Ukrainian uh, people coming through over the next month or two who will be based within East Renfrewshire. Through the Rowan Left Behind programme, we have a range of employability provision that includes uh, parental employability support. And coming to an end is the PACE programme, which provided support to those at risk for experiencing redundancy in light of uh, COVID. We also have dedicated support in terms of additional support needs uh, through one of our current business partners. Uh, also mentioned the employer recruitment incentive programmes, both through the one left behind and the young persons guarantee programme. And again, linking closely with our business gateway team, you know, looking at self-employment as a viable option into the world of work as well. And we do have our community benefits programme, and that's really sort of focused on the council's uh, sustainable procurement policy, uh, and obviously making sure that we derive as many benefits from our uh, procured contracts, uh, and a, with a big, big focus on employability uh, from those contracts as well. So, despite East Rain being a relatively small area, I think maybe sometimes a bit of a misconception in terms of there are parts of East Rain that, that are affluent, but however, you know, there are obviously areas within deprivation uh, within East Rain as well, you know, and that sort of then really, uh, really reflected in the uh, types of uh, participants that we engage with, but also our priority uh, target groups. And that will be also sort of detailed within the new employability strategy, as well as the new economic development strategy as well, in terms of who, who our uh, priority cohorts are moving forward. So really, this is what we do in essence, is the uh, five stage employability pipeline not obviously plan to go through that. I'm, I'm assuming everyone who's on the call is well versed uh, within the uh, five stage pipeline, really from engagement activity, barrier removal, work preparation, and work support. And then obviously stage five is that sustained work and aftercare and all of those activities that you know fall behind or beneath each of those uh, headings as well. But again, probably really critical to ourselves is probably no surprise as well, particularly with external funding. Is uh, you know progressing each of our clients as and when they're ready across each stage of the employability pipeline, but also linked with that is the client paperwork tracking and monitoring as well, which then also sort of justifies the spend from external uh, partners as well as the council's funding as well. So today, uh, we since 2016, uh, we've helped over 140 care experienced young people, both in terms of employment. Uh, into uh, further education and training as well. Uh, well helped over 3,000 people into uh, work with Finnish Rivershire since 2013. A big focus for ourselves recently uh, in light of the uh, change in social economic factors uh, as a result of COVID is uh, a big increase in those people aged over 50. Uh, so since 2017, uh, we've had uh, over 200 people aged over 50 into uh, employment and also working against the employability pipeline as well. And through part of the No One Left Behind program, particularly through the Parental Employability Program, program there's been a big, big focus on working with the uh, unemployed parents as well, and also disabled parents in helping them into employment. And probably one of our most challenging cohorts is also working with those with health conditions. But uh, in terms of the achievements we've done since 2017, over 195 people uh, were actually engaged with and supported uh, from that date. And again, uh, working with a wide range of uh, cohorts within East Renfrewshire, and we've supported over 180 people uh, from minority ethnic backgrounds uh, since 2017 as well. So in terms of what drives us as a team, uh, it's basically looking at national, regional, and local uh, economic drivers and policies. So. These are just a sort of a flair of what sort of drives us as a team uh, in terms of the sort of focus, but also the funding as well. So the new approach by the Scottish Government no longer left behind is obviously currently our primary driver in terms of the, the work that we do. And that covers a wide range of employability programmes, uh, both in terms of delivery, both by the Work to Strength team, 
education councils, other council, uh, uh, council colleagues, but also external partners as well. Uh, we also get the Scotland's economic strategy. We've got the uh, employment the strategy within the Australian Shares currently being updated. And we also link with the outcome delivery plan and locality planning within East Renfrewshire, and we feed into other you know, strategies as well, such as the, the local child poverty action report, as well as get to zero. And we are also very, very active within the Glasgow City region as well across various uh, portfolios, including employability. So as a brief overview of the, uh, the framework, obviously it's now live on Public Contract Scotland, open procedure, uh, duration of 48 months, per annum expected 858 because of that. Again, that's going to be subject to funding being confirmed both internally but primarily externally. In terms of also the sort of process, 60% quality, 40% price, and really, you know, funding not limited to the Scottish Government, no one left behind, young persons guarantee, and the soon to be new UK Shared Prosperity Fund. Now, we have actually, those who were involved in the first session were aware that we had to actually pull the first uh, lot, which was limited to uh, three lots on the advice of our procurement team. We've then had to pull that and come back out uh, with a new uh, list of lots, which are more bespoke as well. So, obviously, apologies for, for that being cancelled, but hopefully today we'll give you a bit more information in terms of each of those lots that are actually, you know, uh, going through the uh, PCS and the invitation to tender uh, document as well. So again, we've also looking to, you know, uh, award work from a wide range of uh, specialists, but also mainstream employability providers as well. And again, the type of provision, you know, will be determined by the service user, as well as the changing uh, social economic factors, both within East Renfrewshire, but also within the Glasgow City region as well. And again, everything that we are doing would be tailored towards helping our residents and uh, clients into employment uh, and uh, uh, as well as vocational training as well, whether that be through group support or individual support as well. So in terms of the overview, the, oh, sorry, the, the overview of the uh, programmes, uh, lot one is the fairly general lot in terms of employability provision, uh, known as client management services. That would cover stages one of the employability pipeline. So that's really from engagement, action planning, uh, CVs, case management, etc. And then really that sort of end to end key work support uh, in terms of this strategic skills uh, pipeline. Lot two uh, would be vocational and accrediting activity. Uh, and that would be really, you know, for the uh, interested parties coming back and letting us know what types of activity in terms of vocational training that can be delivered and hopefully link that up with those growth sectors as we mentioned previously, both at a local level but also at a regional and national level as well. And again, provide be a lot three job brokerage, provide that job matching support to our uh, local residents, making sure that they are job ready and accessing suitable job, primarily focusing stage three and four of the uh, skills pipeline as well. Lot four is dedicated resource working with our local business community. Uh, that also includes business Kate East Renfrewshire. It includes the East Renfrewshire Chamber of Commerce, as well as the three business improvement districts in Barhead, Giffnock and Clarston as well. And that's primarily looking at securing vacancies, making sure our uh, clients are best positioned to take advantage of those vacancies and lining them up for them, and then working in terms of providing them training and work experience placements uh, via that uh, lot. And they would also be responsible for the management of the various employer recruitment centres, uh, both from the One Left Behind programme, but also from Young Persons Guarantee programme as well. Then we mentioned uh, previously we have the uh, Family Forum, which is for care experienced young people. Uh, this lot really provides pre employability and support for uh, our care experienced uh, young people. And you know, a very, very successful program uh, that recently won a uh, national award uh, about two or three years ago uh, from that. So, again, that really sort of covers the five stages of the employability pipeline and could include obviously job tasters, work experience placements, training, further education, but you know, in an ideal world moving our family firm clients into sustainable employment. 
Uh, then we have lot six, which is really focused on additional support needs, uh, currently delivered by an external partner. Uh, that, that was actually one of the sort of the sort of gaps in provision within uh, the Eastern employability uh, landscape. So obviously through the no one left behind support, we've obviously sort of looking at providing dedicated resources and employment support uh, for our local residents, 16 to 24 currently, uh, who are, have uh, additional support needs, and really sort of improving their offering in the service, both in terms of pre-employment support, training, and then ultimately, uh, like most of our lots, into sustainable employment as well. Then we have a dedicated resource in terms of working with our young people. Again, that covers the five stage pipeline, uh, primarily focused on 16 to 24 year olds. Uh, you know, and not, not, you know, every young person within East Rain is going to go to, you know, proper uh, education or university. So it's really sort of helping provide them with that pre employability support, but also tailored employability support to help them move into employment as well. And then the last two lots, we have uh, health barriers. Again, working with our unemployed and active and workless uh, residents within East Renfrewshire may suffer a wide range of uh, health barriers, whether that be physical, mental, sensory, or a learning disability. Uh, it could also be long health, long term health conditions. And really working with them and helping provide them with the guidance and support uh, in terms of their journey into sustainable employment. And then the last lot is the Modern Apprenticeship Programme. This really focuses on assisting the working strength team in terms of the, the, the delivery uh, of the programme, both in terms of the uh, sourcing vocational training for the modern apprentices. They also work closely with our uh, modern apprentice trainers and assessors, really making sure that we are uh, fully compliant with SDS rules and guidance and that we achieve the various milestones set by SDS as well. In terms of the framework, yeah. So obviously, sort of options in terms of the sort of payment model type. We also sort of go through that uh, once we want to the sort of framework, but it can also be a selection from obviously fixed price, service fee, stage payments, and uh, payment by results. So I think really from myself, this maybe sort of probably some of our experiences in terms of uh, advice to interested uh, bidders uh, for that. So obviously the instruction, the ITP and basically, you know, is uh, going through what it actually means in terms of the uh, invitation to tender, go through examples, timescales and submission requirements. Each with, and within the document, there will also be the specification or service requirement against each of the lots. And there will also be the uh, technical response. Uh, we'll come on, you know, in the next slide or two, and give you some sort of maybe sort of top ten tips in terms of some of the the expectations we have as a team uh, to help guide uh, interested parties, and then you also got the uh, the finance in terms of the pricing response, and then you've got the standard contract as well. So that's really the sort of sort of see the key documents in terms of the ITT. So obviously get through the process in terms of you know the PCS process, obviously gate one get through that administrative compliance, making sure that you meet the full eligibility criteria. Have you responded in full? Uh, do you some you know satisfy any of the grounds for inclusion, making sure that all declarations are signed as well. Then on gate two, looking at the economic and financial standing, do you have the sufficient financial capacity? In terms of cash flow, working capital, etc., in relation to both the contract value, the payment mode, and then gate three, going through the technical and price evaluation, making sure that you uh, have responded appropriately, uh, both in terms of quality and the uh, the pricing score as well. So really, from ourselves, it's probably uh, our experience in terms of employability, but other uh, frameworks that we've actually been involved in over a number of years. Uh, for economic development services. So I think really for ourselves is also read the question, but answer the question. Uh, and also sort of, you know, keep your sentences uh, in paragraph short. I think within each of the questions that, 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 that there is a defined word limit on that as well. Making sure that you know that, that there is a logical flow uh, in terms of the uh, information that you that you're providing. And it's really an opportunity for for those interested parties 
to actually, you know, tell tell their story in terms of obviously, you know, achievement skills, uh, successes, etc., and how they would then, you know, be able to assist the workies rent team in the delivery of the various lots. And you know, again, you know, really for myself as well, is uh, it's don't assume prior knowledge uh, from any other parties, you know, in terms of those who are interested in it, and making sure that you're explaining those key so, uh, concepts within each of those uh, questions being asked. Again, I think you know, looking at you know, telling your story, but you know, what what's going to sort of grab our attention is that response to the questions, and you know. Looking to see, you know, that information available clinchers as well. Again, I think we probably minimise the jargon and acronyms. I know sometimes it's quite hard to do that within the employability landscape. Uh, again, avoid spelling mistakes. I think a thorough understanding of the particular uh, social economic conditions and the labour market challenges, plus opportunities within East Renfrewshire, uh, but also looking at the opportunities and challenges both at a uh, regional level through the Glasgow City Region programme and also nationally as well. And again, uh, making sure that your case studies are up to date as well. Any CVs that are being submitted reflect the skills and experience and the competencies required to deliver against each of those lots. Uh, and I think really making sure that we don't deliver employability services within isolation. Uh, yeah, ER is uh, East Renfrewshire. Uh, that really it reflects back to the labour market challenges within East Renfrewshire. And again, uh, making sure that uh, it's a joined up approach in terms of economic de uh, development, but employability is never delivered in isolation within uh, our team. And again, factual information, please don't submit uh, any personal opinions as well. So again, just sort of really continuing on. Uh, yeah, so again, you know, if there are. That, there are questions with bullet points, then please adopt those uh, subheadings. And then, you know, just really sort of terms of layout, et cetera, as well, makes it easier for the bidding team to then actually appraise and score uh, those responses in a correct and uh, timorous manner as well. And again, I think there's really sort of the floor things as well, making sure that they're, they're in the order as the questions are being asked and avoid any uh, extra sub, uh, subheadings which really distract from the uh, the core questions being asked. So again, really from ourselves is you know definitive, right with conviction, be positive, focus on the benefits and the, the advantages of your, what you can actually bring to our team. Uh, making sure obviously it's backed up by uh, evidence. Uh, part of that is really you know through your case studies as well. And other questions is like to see you know showing that evidence of confidence from other customers that you've you, that you've worked with in the past. And again, just really a positive response. Uh, to the questions that are being asked as well, which then for us shows your commitment to then working with, uh, within the working strain team. And then, really, uh, finally, for myself, says so it's a tender document, it's a sales document, it's your opportunity for, for, for you guys to then tell your story to ourselves uh, and obviously take on to the framework. Uh, and again, what I would advise and my, my sort of previous experience is answer the questions. I, I, I wouldn't waste words. On questions that aren't actually answered, and you know, part of that is then looking at personal opinions, etc., as well. And again, you know, really for yourselves, as tell that story and why we should then get you on the framework uh, as well. And I think really our experience in the past is why tenders in the past haven't been uh, successful because they've actually failed to answer the specific questions. They've not given the full specification or response to the question. There's been insufficient level of detail uh, in the sort of questions being asked as well. Uh, not being able to provide evidence of those required competencies, particularly through the CVs and case studies as well. Uh, poor planning in terms of sort of time, putting together teams as well, making sure you've got the right people who are involved within it. And then obviously within the, the sort of pricing mechanism as well. And then there's also any you know eligibility criteria, non-compliance with that as well. So that's really everything from myself today. I know there's a lot of information. There's also sort of contact details, uh, both in terms of the council's procurement team, supplier development program, and then both myself and Emma's uh, contact details as well. So thanks for listening. I know, I know it's quite a lot of information to go through, but hopefully that just sort of gives you a capture in sort of you know terms of the various lots, but also what we're expecting from interested bidders uh, prior to submissions as well. Morning, everybody. Um, 
as Frank said, I've worked both sides of the table in terms of procurement, uh, previously as a buyer and more recently as both a supplier and a buyer in different situations. So hopefully what I can do today is give you some insights that will be a benefit. So let's get straight in. So the aim is to show you enough of the tools to enable you to find this opportunity on both systems. It was published on the 1st of April and has now got a submission deadline of noon on the 5th of May. So we're well into that process. Uh, this general familiarization which visit, which uh, I'm going to run through, is hopefully will help you to use the resources and initially navigate your way around them as part of your own journey. What I'm going to cover is a short outline of both Public Contract Scotland, PCS, and Public Contract Scotland Tenders, PCST, and how you register and work and how that registration can work for you. Uh, the ultimate aim is to help you find this tender so that you can bid for it and be successful and make a profit from it. So I'll have a look at some of the key points to be covered by the framework application before finishing up with a run through of both live systems to provide a practical look at the processes of finding the opportunities and constructing your responses. So Public Contract Scotland, usually referred simply to as PCS, is one of the two primary tools, frontline tools, that potential suppliers to the Scottish public sector need to become most familiar with. It is where all contract notices are published, including this framework requirement. It's the national advertising portal for all contracting opportunities across the Scottish public sector. Because PCS is a national portal, all suppliers can be assured that it's a one-stop shop. You'll find all relevant opportunities for doing business with Scotland public sector advertised within its pages. So once you've registered, you can set up a daily alert email, which will con contain all new notices that match your alert profile. Moving on. While some tender submissions are managed by purchasers through the use of PCS Postbox facility, many of the higher value opportunities are managed using the National Procurement Management Portal, PCS Tender. Uh, these are two different sites. Each requires different registrations, but there is a simple simple way to develop a single sign-on, which is quite useful. And details of that are in the help section on both systems. For this particular framework opportunity, East Renfrewshire Council will be using PCST as its tool for managing the issue of the invitation to tender and for the receipt of submissions from interested suppliers. So before looking at the mechanisms of the process, uh, turn to what you might expect to be covered in the invitation to tender. Uh, typically, an ITT document pack within PCST will contain a number of standard document types. The timetable, there will be a submission deadline and a deadline for asking questions in clarification. Therefore, important to read and fully understand all of the requirements. It should provide greater detail of the specification the likely work content and the deliverables together with how the process of work allocation will be conducted, and that will be covered separately in each of the nine lots. There will be a range of quality questions. These are likely to encompass your management of the delivery, the delivery team and their qualifications, the measures in place to ensure quality of service, your approach to sustainability, net zero, community benefits and fair working practices, and detailed explanation of the award criteria and marking schemes that will apply in selecting successful applicants. We'll also cover things like proposed contract terms, conditions, and some form of pricing schedule, which will link to deliverables. So basically, this is a screenshot of PCS. And what I'm now going to do is go into the live system if I can. OK, so now this is Public Contract Scotland. Um, first time you pop into this. If you're not already registered, you click on register and that will come up there and ask you to register as a supplier. And then there's a fairly simple questionnaire to fill in. We've got the details of you, the details of your organization, where you are based in terms of something called a nuts code, which is just simply a statistical process of sorting out from a, a, a global point of view where contracts have actually been awarded. Whether you're a third sector organization, and some account information, your email address, a password, and password confirmation. And then there's some additional options about picking up with a red, uh, newsletter and confirming your details. Once you've submitted that, it will set you up with a registration. 
And once you have been registered, best thing for you to do is then to search notices. In this case, we're looking for employability. And East Renfrewshire. And current notices. And if we then hit search, hopefully the top one is the one we're looking for. As I say, published on the 1st of April, deadline 5th of May. And the little union jack there means it's a high value contract, which has also been advertised through the UK government's find a tender service. But that's really of no concern because we found it on PCS. Moving on to the notice, you've got the out overall outline and abstract, the full notice text, which provides full detail of each of the nine lots, which uh, Michael went through in some detail. The important aspects here of this one are in section four, which is a fair way down the page because of the number of lots. Sorry, section three, legal, economic, financial, and technical information. This is one of the first hurdles that Michael was talking about. This is the gate one. Insurances, minimum levels required for public liability and employer's liability are five million pounds. Professional indemnity is required for two million pounds. Plus there will be a credit check in terms of the capability so that nobody with a turnover of less than twice the annual turnover, but a less the annual bid, the, the annual value of the lot in question will be allowed to bid. There will also be some measures to establish the financial standing of the bidding. The council will take into account risk reports provided by Credit Safe. Uh, and where Credit Safe is not applicable to smaller companies or new companies, there will be a need for the submission of two years' worth of accounts. It should also be noted for the larger companies that the maximum amount of business that can be passed to a subcontractor or member of a consortium under the contract, again, cannot be more than 50% of their annual turnover. And the council then reserves the right to request other evidence that that is happening. In terms of technical and professional ability, lots two and nine require specific vocational accreditation for training and industry certification covering a number of things. And for the apprentice training uh, aspect in lot nine, again, national registrations are required. So again, that's something which individual bidders would need to look at within the qualification process. So as I say, this contract is being managed using PCS tender. And to find it on PCS tender, we need to look for project code 20904. But what I'll now do is bring up PCST. Again, a simple look at the homepage on PCST. If you're not already registered, then there is capability to register as a supplier by clicking on that little thing, which is re relatively well hidden. You then agree terms and conditions. And again, complete an initial registration set of data, which covers the organization and the individual who is making the registration. And again, you create a strong password from that point of view. relatively simple, should take about 10 minutes. You should also note that if you complete your extended profile on PCS Tender, that itself completes the single procurement document for you as a background piece of information, which would then automatically be populated every time you select a tender that you want to express an interest in.
Right. What we're doing here is we're looking for an invitation to tender. Initially, invitation to tenders, which are open to all suppliers. And we're going to start by filtering that the project code. And we're looking for a project code that contains 20904. And here we have, you know, because of, I have had to log in, I've already expressed interest in lot two, and I've already expressed interest in the qualification envelope. But effectively, all you need to do is you click on that, pick the lot that you're looking for, it comes up and you then say express interest. If you click on express interest, it then says you have now expressed interest in this lot. You cannot submit a response until you first submit the rel related qualification only ITT, blah, blah, blah. Uh, click on that. And that now will add that particular lot. As you see, it's disappeared from this list and it now appears in your list of ITTs, which are opens up in a list of ITTs which are collected by you. No, I'm not in the right place. My apologies. So, back to ITT. And here this, you go into a tab which is My ITTs. And we now see that the Master ITT for provision of employability support services is there. Lot 9, which I have just expressed interest in and lot two, which I expressed interest in last week as a, as a quick look round. So first of all, the master ITT needs to be completed by everybody, regardless of whichever lot you are intending to respond to. Now, as a, as a checklist, what you can do with this is if you Click on printable view, those three little dots beside decline to respond and intend to respond. And if you click on that printable view, it will give you a PDF document which you can download, which is a complete run through in fairly plain text and reasonably well, out, uh, well laid out uh, of all of the details required for the specific lot. And that will highlight where you have got end dates for supplier clarification messages, which is the 28th of of April and the closing date, which is the 5th of May. So again, it's important that you read all the documentation attached to this invitation to tender and fully understand it. And where you think you don't understand something, seek clarification from Mike and his team. And bear in mind that putting questions in through the PCST mailbox system is the only way you can approach the buyer to ask any clarification questions from here on in. But it will indicate Attachments that you should download and read. Top level evaluation and awarding criteria, uh, things of that nature. In this particular instance, documents here need to be read are the PCS tender supplier response guide. Important that you know that and are familiar with it because it's a great help document in helping you put together the acceptance of uh, the response to the ITT. Going back to the live system, the acceptance of documentation section of procurement specific questions. Now, the, this basically is the single procurement document, and a lot of this information will already be populated if you have completed your extended profile. As you'll see here, a number of those cases there, that my information is already in place because I've used in my standard. Uh, the registration. So you've got questions related to the bidder in terms of the entity, in this case, JI management. You've then got questions about the legal status, the standardized questions, which you are a micro or medium enterprise, is the bidder a supported business? 
And if, if you answer yes to some questions, that then opens up an additional things. Uh, in terms of this particular one, conditional section on official lists and certifications. Now, where you see a triangle of that kind, you have to click on that, and that will download a document. This one here, in terms of the overarching qualification envelope, is indicating the lots for which you are bidding. Now, if you click on intent to respond, It opens up the possibility that you can now respond to that question. Read and yes, and the date that you read it. And as you can see, the format of the page changes slightly with expanding the boxes for you to put your information in. A lot of these responses are drop down lists, relatively easy. And in terms of being registered in official lists of employable of approved contractors and suppliers, in the majority of cases, this is not applicable on a UK business, but primarily for foreign businesses. Are you part of a group and things of that nature? And then there's information about the, the specific representation of the data who is completing these, and that would be your chief executive officer, managing director, or chief finance officer, or chief operations officer. Does the business rely on the capacities of other entities to, to deliver the contract? Uh, that's covered. Uh, Subcontractors of whose capacity the bidder does not rely, and any uh, that would be a situation where there is a consortium or a, a joint bid, and that would mean that this particular format of the single procurement document would have to be completed by all members of the consortium. Uh, a, the part three contains a complete list of exclusions for conviction, things such as conspiracy, corruption, involvement in terrorist offences, involvement in money laundering, terrorist financing, child labour or human trafficking, drug trafficking, or other offences. And that is something for which you need to pay particular attention. Uh, the second part of section A. So it's the second part of 3A involves a number of other conditional exclusions covering payment of taxes and social security, involvement in blacklisting, um, breaching environmental, social law, or labor laws, um, the status and financial standing of the company in terms of operating uh, as a bankrupt business or insolvency, or whether you've got arrangements in place with creditors, whether you're looking to be in liquidation, whether your business is suspended, um, and whether you have been involved in the distortion of competition or conflicts of interest. Now, all of these are self-certification. And clearly, if a business is in any of these situations, it's probably not going to be viable to seek a public contract. Now, important uh, from a whole standard point of view is one of the questions is whether you have been involved in preparing the, uh, the, the procurement for which you are now applying, which is again something which would represent a potential conflict of interest. 
whether your business has been had a contract terminated early from the point of view of non-delivery or non-enforcement uh, of capabilities, and also whether you have previously been found to have misrepresented any details in answering questions on a single procurement document. Registration on professional trade registers is one of the aspects which, in this particular instance, if you are requiring in relation to lot two or lot nine, you would be required to in, include that detail in here. Um, Here in lot and um, question 172.2 is the minimum required turnover per year specified for each of the lots, and bidders will need to be able to certify that they should produce the yearly specific turnover in the business areas covered by the contract and specifically for the lots that they wish to apply. Bidder confirms they already have or can commit to obtain prior to the commencement of the contract the levels of insurance cover indicated below. As I said, professional indemnity risk 2 million, employers compulsory liability 5 million, and product liability of 5 million. Now, again, you don't have to have this in place to bid, but you would have to undertake to have it in place by the start of the contract. important aspect of this particular one is section 4C. Qualification section, delivery of industry recognized certification training. And for this particular lot two and lot nine, it outlines that you would need to have accredited training, delivery and industry certification for things like first aid, food hygiene, Lift truck driving. And for lot nine, the modern apprenticeship program must be must be currently approved to assess, deliver, and certificate the following qualifications. Business administration level three, social services, children and young people level three, facility services level two, facility management level three, and professional cookery level two. And then at 4C6, certifying that the following education and professional qualifications are held by the service provider or the contractor itself. And again, there's a valid response required in there. So that effectively completes the global questions. And that's a certification that you are confident that you meet all selection criteria as detailed in the relevant contract notice and, of course, the associated documentation. And then a concluding statement that the undersigned formally declares to be able, upon request, to supply all of the data covering all of those things which you have said you actually supply to. So, and then go back. the response.
what I'll do is have a look at lot two and the specifics that we can look at some of the questions. Now, as I say, you can download a printable view of the tender weightings, and that is a reasonable thing to do to act as a checklist to make sure that you have done all of the things. You can also download an online question in Excel. And do the whole thing offline. But if you do that, please don't add any columns or any rows because that will screw up your final uh, submission. As if you try to upload the document, it will be uh, reformatted and you'll miss out on some particular information and it will probably mean that your bid cannot actually be assessed. But it is a reasonable way to work offline if you want to. And if you have done that, then you can import items as your means of uh, submitting the ITT. Right, this is a look now at lot two. As you can see, it's got three envelopes of the qualification response, the technical response, and the commercial response. And these are specific to each of the lots. If we look at the qualification response, one of the first things I tend to do is to validate the response. And if you do that, PCST checks your missing answers and highlights whether you have responded to them or not. Now, in this particular instance, There's a, a number of procurement specific questions here. We confirm that they comply with all of the relevant response, uh, relevant information detailed within the tender information pack. Actually, what I will do is I will go back because within this there is the need to download the tender information pack. And if you click on that, the tender information pack, which is a specific document related to the overarching requirement. And we open that. Now, this is a significantly large document, 62 pages, and there's the whole thing that it covers. Contract documentation to take precedence, the electronic tendering, the council of right to cancel or theory, and a whole range of other things, and how you should go about looking at the questions. Now, in terms of things like format and response, eligibility, material changes, how you handle conflicts of interest, data protection act, samples, and payment of accounts. So this this basically is the document which outlines a glossary of terms and a whole range of situations. So the, these instructions need to be, as I said, read and understood. If there's something which you don't feel that you are fully okay with, then go back and ask a question. But as I said, those documents are something which you need to be capable of complying with as part of the process. Another document that needs to be downloaded from here is the specification. Uh, and I've already done one of these, so let me have a look. Mandatory specification. A lot to vocational and accredited training. Again, 
This is a much simpler document, three pages, but it does give you a, a complete rundown of all of the provisions from this lot, which are going to be able to support the field of work experience and, and industry recognized certification via apprenticeships, programs, and a structured transitional pathway to sustainable employment. But again, for each of the lots, there is a document like this, which gives you more detail of specific examples of what lot tasks are likely to be laid at your door as a winner of this lot. So successful contractors are required to undertake information security training, insider e-learning training modules, information cyber security, and a tutor-led course. So again, there's a, there's a number of deliverables there. And those, as I said, there will be one of these documents embedded in each of the ITTs for the specific lots. So again, like anything which you don't understand, you would be needing to seek clarification from the buyer on. So here we are again, questions on things like modern slavery. Fair work practices and living wages sections. In each of these cases, some of them are drop down lists. Here we are, I am an accredited living wage employer, or I am not, but I do not pay the living wage to all employees. So there's a whole spectrum of responses there. Do you have a living wage policy? How many people or how many subcontractors are going to be paid the living wage as part of your operation of this contract? Do you use zero hours? And that is the end of that part of the qualification response. So again, every time you've gone in there, save and exit. Technical response is again, fairly weighty. And in this case, there are a number of documents which you need to attach. Community benefits. There is a guidance document which you need to download and read and understand. And this gives you a whole set of guidance on what kind of community benefits East Renfrewshire might be looking for as part of this contract. And again, it's important to understand that a successful contractor with an accumulated annual value of over 50,000. At the end of each financial year, a review of the level of work commissioned to each supplier will be conducted and the number of community benefits points will be determined and the supplier contracted to agree those community benefits. Again, fair work practices. Again, there is a situation where you need to describe and demonstrate how you will commit to progressing towards adopting the five fair work practice criteria. Again, there is a document there which outlines the requirements and the guidance laid down by the council. Roles and responsibilities. Here we have three specific questions. Provide an overview of your proposed approach to delivering the service in relation to this lot. And you've got a thousand words to explain. As Michael said, that's where you can tell your story, outline your capabilities and your successes in this area how you're going to set up your organization and the roles and responsibilities of your proposed team for this lot. Again, a maximum of a thousand words. Attaching file, once you've got your answer sorted out, click on the attach file. Select the file to upload. If you hit select file, it will take you straight into your directories on your computer, whether that's uh, in this case, mine is a Mac, so it might be slightly different. Select the document, open it, and it is there. And when you save, that will be saved as part of your response 
and it can be changed if you need to later by uploading a, by deleting that document and uploading another document. So that's a fairly simple process in each case. But there are about seven questions within each of the lots covering these types of things. Um, things like availability of resources, outlining how and who will be delivering. And in each case, the maximum of 1,000 words. In the particular answer to this particular question of that availability of resources, CVs are required for each of the team members who will be put there uh, as part of your team. Uh, there is no restriction on limits, but I would recommend that before you start putting CVs together, you agree a set of ground rules for each of the CVs in terms of format. Um, outline of the role, personal details of the person, details of their previous employment, starting with what they do now and working backwards, details of their qualifications, starting with the latest and working their way backwards. That makes it much easier for an assessor to read. Now, at the moment, I think we've got almost 20 or 25 participants in this webinar. So if each of those represents a different company across the nine lots, the team is going to have to read 25 or more submissions. Each of those submissions will have seven or eight questions of a thousand words. That's an awful lot of reading. Uh, the easier you can make it for assessors to see that you've answered the question, as Michael said, use the outline of the question as the outline of your answer. Describing how you would engage with your clients to ensure all of the services you offer meet their requirements for this lot. Again, a file attached. Employability partners. You may be required to work with our employability partners to deliver projects, both at a management level and with frontline operational staff. Describe your approach to delivering projects within this sort of environment. Again, a maximum of a thousand words. How are you going to monitor performance to deliver a quality output? Your commitment to things like continuous improvement, uh, management of staff, describe how you would manage your staff during an engagement and particularly how you would communicate during the delivery of work programs. And then questions on value for money, covering management of cost, the competencies, please outline three competencies that your role should demonstrate to bring added value to the wider team. Value for money and added value. Please describe how you would ensure value for money and added value was brought to the contract without affecting the quality of the service. And then continuing improvement, lessons learned, industry practices, review project successes, and then an outline of the procedures that you will have in place. As you can see, there's quite an awful lot of reading here to do, and some of the stuff is much more detailed in the specification and much more detailed in the, uh, in the information pack that goes part of this. And you should also, as I said, read and certify that you have read the PCST user documentation. And finally, employability case studies. Please provide recent case studies for the work you have delivered similar to the slot requirement and demonstrate how your approach mirrors that of no one left behind. Now, the questions will be slightly different in each of the lots, but there will be a situation where case studies are required. As you can see, uh, environmental and sustainability selection of procurement questions, please. Detail your approach to delivering the services for this lot in sustainable and environmentally friendly manner, demonstrating how proposed services and deliveries adhere to the environmental management standards and policies. Again, covering quality and diversity. And this one is likely to be a slightly bigger question than might first appear. Requires tenderers to upload a contract exit strategy that sets out the procedures to be followed prior to the contract end date. The following must be covered as a minimum. Data security and privacy, 
detail how you will arrange for the transfer of all data belonging to East Renfrewshire Council, including any customer information. Uh, now, this is a specific example where the meat of that question would be something which you would look at as each individual aspect being covered by the exit plan that you put together. I mean, in particular, for these kind of things, you need to look at timescales for key actions, who would be responsible for them, um, what financial notifications and any details that you will keep East Renfrewshire Council informed of the financial stability of your organization and the timescale in which you will appear. So again, that's, that's quite a big question to answer. There's no word limit on there. Um, if you have got a plan, I would think it needs to be more than a kind of half a page. It would be something that would be fairly detailed and would be something that you need to think of upfront at the end of a four year period. How are you going to transfer this information back to East Renfrewshire? And how are you going to certify that you have destroyed or have safeguarded any personal data that you have gathered over the period of the four year contract? And then a question which is not exactly, not actually scored is about the Scottish Living Wage Accreditation Initiative. Are you a living wage employer? Has your organisation signed up to the Scottish business pledge? So again, save an exit on every occasion. And finally, we'll have a quick look at the commercial response. Um, and this would be something that will be perhaps slightly different because, as Michael said, there will be a number of different uh, rate cards and methods of payment in terms of payment for others, standard one-off and hourly rates and measures by um, outcomes. So in this particular instance, looking at a total weekly rate for all services required of this law as detailed within the specification. So again, that will be slightly different for each of the lots within this. Um, then rebates offered in the price section. Then it's asked to offer a retrospective discount rebate agreement with the tiered accounts being given over certain annual turnover thresholds. Please provide details below of what you can offer under this contract. It is recognized that the council cannot provide you with guaranteed levels of work. So again, that would be a great commercial decision for each individual. And then a breakdown of costs for information only. This section is for information and it's not going to be stored, but you need to provide a breakdown of all costs staff associated with the delivery of this service as detailed within the specification. So as I say, again, that would be slightly different for each of the lots. And if you then have any additional attachments which are required as part of this, then they would come into this particular section here as the, as the additional attachment area. So that effectively is a relatively swift run through, although we've taken a fair amount of time to do this. Um, so you've got four areas for lot that you might want to bid for. You would have Specifically, the qualifications section, which is the single procurement document with the overarching qualification. You then have within each individual lot a qualification response, a technical response, and a commercial response. And if you're bidding for more than one lot, then you will clearly need to add additional uh, case studies, and additional examples of work which you have undertaken in similar vein to this for other uh, organizations. Uh, that basically brings us to the end of the, the slide back. There will be a number of slides which are effectively just uh, place markers in the slide pack. Before you log off of PCST, if I can just catch you. Are you going back to your slides, John? Sorry. Thank you, Chief. Project 20904, they're all the same. Master ITT, that is one that needs to be answered by everybody. And as 
far as I can tell, I don't think PCXT will allow you to upload your response to lot nine, for instance, if you haven't already completed the master ITT. But it might not be that clever. But effectively, this is the single procurement document and that would need to be completed for each member of a consortium, although only the lead consortium members' finances might need to be taken into account. Perfect. Thank you. And that's it, as I say, within this, I think it's 4C. There is a need to provide example projects that you have done. Yes, at uh, part 4C, 1.73, there is a question there which says, please provide three examples of previous contracts providing a similar service over the last five years. Relevant examples of supplies and services carried out during the last three years, sorry, as specified in the contract notice. Examples from both public and private sector customers and clients may be provided. So again, there's a document there that you need to upload, which is an outline of your capability. And in that, in fact, the, uh, that little black triangle there, if you click on that, it will download a template document, which you then need to complete. It's relative, it looks relatively simple. Use that template to answer the technical and professional ability question 4C12 of the ESPD of the SPD response and upload the completed document next to the question. Don't upload that document to the general attachments area. Uh, as I said, there's going to be an awful lot of interest in this tender framework. There's going to be a number of bids come in. And if things are in the wrong place or difficult to find, then it's highly unlikely that they will be assessed properly and you'll get a low score. So that document would then be uploaded into that particular part. Of the SPD. Perfect. Let's go for questions now then. Let's just. 